So, uh, hi, very good morning. We have a patient who is a case of low rectal cancer who has a, a growth starting from about uh, 4 cm from the anal verge. Uh, it is a 42 year old lady who has uh, uh, been diagnosed with rectal cancer about uh, 3 months back. She has received uh, chemo radiotherapy that is 45 or uh, long course chemo radiotherapy and she has completed it in the month of February on 12th of February and she has also completed two cycles of chemotherapy. Now following that we are taking her up for a intersphincteric resection. Um, she is eligible on uh, per rectal examination the growth is uh, about uh, three and a half to four centimeters from anal verge and is extending up to about uh, 6 cm to 7 cm. Upper end is felt, it is well mobile, it is from 3 to 6 o'clock uh, position and uh, clinically also sphincters appear free and on MRI as well the sphincters are free. So we have already in, uh, induced the patient and we have uh, uh, inflated the abdominal cavity with carbon dioxide. Now, we need to mark the port position. We'll, we are using an XI robo, which is, uh, which we have an advantage of rotating it towards the upper abdomen as well when we need. Uh, you know, there is a difference between SI and XI in the sense that SI, is, can, you cannot rotate the entire boom. So, uh, you know, the, ro the robo has to be repositioned. When it comes to XI, it is possible for us to place the robotic ports in a straight line. So that is a big advantage. When they say straight line, it does not mean that you cannot use a curved line for XI. But the, the very fact that the ports can be placed in a, uh, in a straight line gives you an advantage of moving it to either upper abdomen or lower abdomen. Now, when it comes to the port position for and lower rectal cancer, whether it is a low, uh, low anti-resection or an ultra-low anti-resection or intersphincteric resection, uh, the port positions remain the same because we need to aim to reach uh, the splenic flexure also to mobilize it. So what we do is we try to finish the entire surgery in single docking. So our, our ports are placed in a very, uh, in a horizontal fashion. So what we would do is look at the mid clavicular point, mark the mid clavicular point and take whenever possible, take the ports along the line joining the mid clavicular line or uh, uh, line and the anterior superior iliac spine. This will give you full access to the entire area so that your surgery can happen without much difficulty. So, uh, Camera should be generally is placed in the midline or just to the lateral. How do we? Uh, yeah, some this will be the camera position. We have two assistant ports. So, yeah, see, they, I don't think you can see it from there because it's too oblique, isn't it? Can't stay there. Zoom out there, yeah, port. So generally, as the see, this is one of the, the left arm port. How much? Eight centimeter, la. See, we are placing it eight centimeter, but make sure that the port is at least one centimeter, one inch below the uh, coastal margin. Otherwise, it will wedge over there. So this is the camera port. We have two more ports to be placed. One again at eight centimeter from the uh, camera port and one more again, one more 8 centimeter. But a lower down port would not be harmful. So somewhere here is the port. Now how do we place the assistant ports? Assistant ports are always placed about 5 centimeter away from the uh, robotic ports and in the mid, the space between the two ports. So that gives an optimal access, otherwise it will clash with the uh, robotic ports or the robotic instruments. 
So this would be the, you want to market our place or I'll just, uh, yeah, eyeballing is also worth it. So these are the two ports. So this will be a 12 mm port, the lateral one, and the, uh, this will be a 5 mm suction port. So you are happy with the port position? Okay. So my assistant, uh, Dr. Amin, says he is happy with the port position. So we'll start placing the ports. So now you can go ahead and put, you can uh, show how the, yeah. So initially when you are doing it, it's always better to mark the ports like this. And when you mark it, you take the incision from the outer to the outer of the, uh, you know, ring which is formed by the impression vertical yeah this is a midline port This is better to be put laterally slightly. It will give a better. Uh, Okay, so uh, energy sources are connected. Okay, needle you can introduce. Let me see. So first step that we do is to hits the uterus any any female the reason for that is that you know we uh, don't want the uterus to come in the way way as we operate so first step is to hitch yes please shall i okay <coughs> Very thick, uh, broad ligament, no? I think there is a cyst also here.
ಎಲ್ಲ ಬ್ಲೀಡ್ ಆಯಿತು I lift up the uterus. I need to change some settings in the robo. No, no, whatever. I, I am holding it right now, so... Yeah, that's fair enough. She has a very short uh, sigmoid. So I'm starting. So see, I have li I've used the third arm, the progress to lift the uh, sigmoid colon up so that the sigmoid mesocolon becomes prominent. We can see the, uh, you know, inferior mesenteric artery fold. This is the inferior mesenteric artery. We can see the sacral promontory. The ureter is here. This is the ureter. Uh, uh, you can see the continuation of ureter here going down. So, uh, if needed, one of the very good ideas is, you know, if the ovaries or uh, the tubes disturb a lot so very often we uh, uh, clip the tube up so that you know uh, we don't have any disturbance while operating but in this case i am leaving it as it is so this is the position as of so i'll be starting by uh, in a medial to lateral fashion i'm scoring the peritoneal fold over the left uh, sorry right of the um, uh, sigmoid mesocolon So once I score this, the presacral region opens up. So this is the sacral promontory and the pelvic nerves will be under this fat. So we will be, I will be showing you the uh, pelvic nerves soon. So you can see this is the uh, you can see the as you enter the plane the this plane is always you know has this angels here you can see this this is just loose areolar tissue you can clearly see the tissue uh, which is loose areolar tissue it is not of dense uh, tissue at all so in this this is the plane this is the plane in which you have to go it is there across even in the once you cross the uh, sacral promontory you get into the mesorectal plane and this is the mesorectal plane you can clearly see it so this is the plane so now we'll come above a little bit we need to clear this area as well this is towards the uh, inframesentric artery, root of inframesentric artery.
So you can see the inferior mesenteric artery there. So now our first step is to identify the ves uh, the uh, autonomic nerves. So you can see the nerves here, these are the nerves which are going down into the pelvis. I need to confirm with these are also nerves, I will confirm that as I go up. At this stage a change of position of the third arm does help, third arm sorry the assistant arm. So the best place to identify the nerves is at the root of inframesentric artery. Section I mean, yeah, just clean this area once. You can see the nerve plugs, uh, nerves going down here, you can see them clearly here along the, this is the aortic bifurcation uh, and there is a layer of fascia separating the nerves and the plane of dissection, these are the nerves here, I mean section. section please you want to just remove this some just no uh, just peritoneal tissue that's all nothing else yeah So we move towards the root of the uh, inframesentric artery, this is the root, yeah thank you. Here as you go up above the inframesentric artery, the duodenal fourth part of the third part of the duodenum runs flat, so you have to be very careful not to injure it. And as you are dissecting there will be an obtuse artery going upwards and that artery is actually the left colic artery. This is the left colic and in this case as we need to do complete mobilization it is unlikely that we will be saving it. So we are taking all the lymphatics from the root of the inframesentric artery.
so that is the left uh, left nerve the right nerves are here pushed down you can see that so left nerve comes around the uh, inferior centric artery so after this much dissection i will be going further lateral to identify the ureter that is the ureter so this is my plane i have to leave behind some connective tissue over the ureter it's the aim is not to bear it but in a thin patient like this it gets little difficult to uh, spare any connective tissue next structure once you identify the ureter that is the ureter you can see the peristalsis is the gonadal so that is a gonadal there can be some communication between the vessels of gonadal and the uh, mesocolon so this is the plane now so gonadal and the and the ureter are clearly identified very important structures because if you miss them there is a risk of injury i mean section here some bleeding somewhere section so you can see the um gerotas fascia starting over here so this is gerotas we'll be dissecting it after the ligation of the inferior mesenteric artery so to ligate inferior mesenteric artery i need to get little more traction so that the dissection is completed so now that all the vital structure on the left are identified we can go ahead and ligate it so again the visualization of the nerves see these are the nerves here on the right side i have left a uh, uh, you know layer of fascia now we'll dissect around the inferior mesenteric artery in this case we'll do a flush ligation or uh, high ligation because we need to mobilize and take off of the inferior uh, left colic is here this is the inferior mesenteric vein so the left colic takes off this is the left colic which is taking off from here and going like this but as we are not saving it i am not going to focus on dissection so yeah fair enough so i'll be uh, you know taking this i'll dissect around the inferior mesenteric artery to get the get the plane for transection of the artery the in a thin patient there is always a risk of perforating or coming through the mesocolon so that risk is always there so this is inferior centric artery i mean the gas is leaking or what gas is holding Hold, holding no okay great yeah so this is the inferior mesenteric artery so especially when you are performing a robotic uh, if you don't transect the uh, inferior mesenteric artery early there is a risk of injury because there is no tactile sensation and there is a risk of uh, inadvertent injury to the artery or avulsion of the artery when you are doing retroperitoneal or retrocolic dissection so it's always important that you ligate it early so uh, i mean can we have yeah yes please 
So one mandatory thing before you ligate the infamous centric artery is identification or few important things identification of the nerves pelvic nerves you can see it here these are the nerves you are not taking them in your clip and second thing is ureter because these two important structures have to be identified clips please so two towards the patient and one towards the specimen the specimen clip is useful mainly for the pathologist to identify the root of mesentery root or root of the vessel yeah okay clean it off so now that the infemesentric artery is ligated so i am moving the third arm that is uh, the prograsp arm to lift up the mesocolon so this lift will give us an access under the mesocolon and we'll be dissecting the retroperitoneum so again identifying the structure the ureter gonadal so my plane has to be here to push the gerotas posteriorly you can see the gerotas fascia as you go upwards you will see it as a thin layer of fascia covering the kidney i mean you are in can you just push the bubble down so that i can score the yeah i don't want to perforate the duodenum so you can see that uh, the gerotas getting separated from the mesocolon all okay i mean i mean okay so this is the gerotas again and you don't need any energy source to dissect this because this is this is an avascular plane only 
a few small uh, vessels may be there communicating but generally by far it is avascular and you can just push the tissues okay i'll get the third arm little more in That is the inferior mesenteric vein which we are seeing there. As we get up, as the patient's head is down, the small bowel tends to fall because the small, small, the small bowel is packed up. So you have to be very cautious. She is a very thin lady. So we are going lateral in the retroperitoneum, retrocolic space. Now I have done 30 up because my scissors were clashing with the camera port. So I had to get that space, working space, otherwise it gets difficult. Still there is a problem. Uh, so it could be this, yeah. The progress is clashing with scissors, right? Table team, please. Yeah, thank you. So, you, I think this is the pancreas because of the whitish hue which you are seeing and I can see a vessel running there. So, possibly that is the pancreas. I need to identify, let me just confirm. What is happening? Thank you. Isn't that the pancreas? This is DJ, no? So this is the pancreas, no? So we are okay as far as pancreatic uh, this thing is concerned. Correct, no, this is, should be the pancreas because this is DJ. Because I was trying to identify the pancreas.
uh, it is the scissors with uh, this thing, right? Prograsp, no? Can you give me an update on what is hitting what? No, no, I just want to know what is hitting what. I, it doesn't matter, I may be wrong. Okay, thank you. As I can do the adjustments here, that's why. So that is the pancreas, you can see the pancreas. So, let's get in. You can see the tail of the pancreas. So we are detaching the uh, transverse mesocolon from the uh, transverse mesocolon from the uh, pancreas, body and the tail of the pancreas. Oh, we need to clean the camera. So splenic flexure uh, mobilization is a difficult part of the robotic surgery because you need to maneuver and get especially because most of the patients will have a long mis uh, sigmoid colon in India so it is easier but when the mesocolon is short, the sigmoid is short uh, then the mobilization has to be complete so you need to uh, get under the uh, in the retroperitoneum, mobilize the entire uh, entire transverse colon, entire sorry left uh, uh, colon as well as the transverse colon, and splenic flexure has to come down. So this mobilization becomes extremely important. So this is pancreas. I don't know the if the above part of it, the part which is coming above, it, that also is pancreas. But there is a plane here, so I think safer to get into it. That may be peripancreatic fat. It should not be there much, but we are heading towards this uh, root of the spleen. Uh, sorry, spleen. So we have to. So that is the splenic tail, sorry, uh, pancreatic tail. So there is pancreatic tail will I mean retract this little bit, just the small bubble needs to be just held like this. Just keep it there, that's okay, that's fair. Don't push too hard, it'll come back. 
So now we'll be uh, dissecting the inframesentric vein and ligating it as high as possible. The reason for that is uh, low ligation of the vein does not give you the length which you want. Yeah, clip please. One second. I yeah, it's okay. Okay, whichever. One. Properly, I mean. Above it, above, uh, no, above, uh, above it means below, below, towards the patient, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. You fire, fire, I'll come back. Yeah. You get one more? One more? Yes, yes. Because the vein, so you have to be more careful. And you put above. Yes, fire. So, we are cutting the inferior mesenteric vein close to the pancreas so that you get a good length. So, that con completes the above <laughs> dissection. Now, we start the uh, presacral dissection. It's okay, no? Clean enough. In okay. It will get lost later on. Hardly any bleed. Nothing is there. Okay. start. So again back to the same pelvis, we have the ureter, we have the gonadal, we can see the plane here. So this is where the, uh, the swas is under this. We don't expose the swas, we don't need to expose it, there is a layer of fascia. When you go in the right plane, uh, usually there is a layer of retroperitoneal fascia which remains on the swas. Uh, so all these small bleeders which can be tackled with just a small buzz. So there we are. <coughs> so we go down into the pelvis. I think you have to change the, this thing, arm, uh, you have to rotate a little more. The, whichever, that scissors arm and this thing, no, they are coming too close to each other.
yeah okay fine i think okay done no because i felt the scissors was touching something i was wondering what right so the mesorectal excision is a sharp dissection uh, whenever you see a strong tissue but whenever you see loose areolar tissue it is possible to simply uh, buzz it a uh, sorry uh, do a sharp uh, cut you don't need to use cautery say a cutting a cut or a push should work when it comes to loose areolar tissue so you can see the mesorectal fascia anteriorly and it's very important that we leave behind the presacral uh, fascia and the vessels along with it because if you enter the presacral there is a risk of uh, massive bleeding because the vessels don't have any walls so your dissection should be anterior or the uh, plane should be between the two endorectal fascia the visceral layer and the parietal layer i mean you are in the towards down okay thank you no fair enough now it it stopped i just wanted to confirm so we will so where is the ureter here because ureter does not generally doesn't get exposed but there is nothing like never section there i mean okay thank you actually the retaining that peritoneal fold helps you in, in uh, you know not getting in the uh, the fluids don't get into the uh, surgical field because of the peritoneal fold so that keeps it away something is touching the camera port is touching the this one is it scissors i don't know something is touching yeah yeah inside yeah i'll see because as we put uh, head and uh, sorry this one uh, 30 up later on see i i am having to stay little away because of that section there at the moment i do this it will uh, that will go into the retro pre uh, presacral area yeah
because of radiation, there is a lot of additions here. So, uh, getting the right plane could be a challenge sometimes because of radiation. But then, most of our cases today are radiated. So, we can't, we can't complain about it. I mean, be in the field so that, you know, you can give a clear vision. Don't move too much. So, this is the plane you can see. As the space gets narrower, it gets more difficult to work. In a in, in what did you see? Where? No, no, I did uh, digital zoom because I was not going able to go in because space issues are coming. So I did a digital zoom. The vision is slightly blurred. No? Yes or no? Oh. I am not very happy with the vision, but I, anyway, I can't go very close, so I am trying to do it from far. A digital zoom I have kept. Okay. You can see the, uh, you know, the angels here very clearly now, isn't it? So, as we go down into the pelvis, the uh, rectum curves upwards. So, it's very important to understand that anatomy uh, as we uh, go deeper into the pelvis. So, let me see if I can get a better view and then I'll be going for a 30 up. I mean, you are, you are wedging on my things, please remove. Oops.
you can see the pelvic floor now this is the elevator So again the elevator here. All right, so we'll come out of the pelvis. Let's see, we'll go around the rectum. Let's just see once whether there is any bleed looks clean okay so we'll go around the rectum now because we have gone quite far down into the pelvis uh, I need a retraction on the colon I mean a sigmoid one second I'll show you yeah swing it up yeah, good. <clears throat> I'll just uh, change the zoom settings because there's too, too much zoom. Zoom reduces the clarity, correct, no? So now we'll free up the, we'll go into the anterior, we'll, we'll dissect. This is an easier dissection usually. So that is the rec uh, vesic sorry, uh, recto uh, uterine pouch. We are getting into the <coughs> dissecting that plane. Let me get this in a better position so that I my hand is free. So I just need to retract this. No, this is too much. I think center this is enough. So we can we have the plane as it is radiated there are uh, some amount of fibrosis so i'll this is all the part of the specimen section with yeah yeah okay any issues communicate uh, huh? with what Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I'll just... Uh, right, so rectum, come. Yeah. 
yeah swing it up get it little more medially medially yeah we yeah, i'll go up and finish off uh, this side okay there is a dense addition over here why let's we have finished the dissection here so let's complete this and we'll come anteriorly lot of fibrosis here isn't it we'll uh, finish little more of this uh, these other dissections and then we'll come back because that seems to be very uh, densely adherent over there so i'll finish this and then we'll get to that okay so i am in the right lateral uh, aspect right now and this is where the mesorectum is no, uh, not well formed always and the middle rectal artery could be here if it is there it's a rare entity so it it's not there in all the patients that's a middle rectal vessel going there tackled and sent laterally 
As we come anteriorly, it is the vagina which we have to be careful about. You can perforate, you may perforate the vagina by uh, cautery. So you have to just watch out. The only issue is the air loss, otherwise it should not be a problem. As we go down the vessels, uh, we will encounter some vessels coming from the uh, from the pelvic wall to the rectum. Scissors this scissors and camera. Okay. Why? What is the reason? Any correction possible? It's a narrow, very narrow space, so I have to. Entry point, okay. Now I could make out because the uh, ports are rolling, so it's okay, it's manageable, it's not so bad. I just have to maneuver the camera a little laterally, that's all. I'm doing it, it's fair enough. So there you go, that is the pelvic floor again. We will Okay, so we have done this. For some reason, the anterior addition seems to be uh, more of an annoyance to us than the, the mesorectum in this case. So we'll solve this mystery by going little distally, finishing that and coming back. Oops, vagina is very, very vascular. Where is the, uh, the progress? Let me just get in the progress to help me out. Okay. No, that's okay. I think that will manage it. This is not the area of the disease, so I'm quite comfortable uh, treating it like a benign... Sp uh, I don't have space, I mean. I'll manage it, don't worry, I'll tell you. Yeah. Her vagina is very vascular, it is bleeding, uh, there are a lot of veins in the vaginal wall. See, just stay there, I mean. I am now worried about her vaginal wall because we have done a lot of cautery. Right. Okay, clean the camera, please. No, I'm not getting that good enough traction, so I'll just do it off. Because otherwise I'll end up in wrong plane there. This is not required. I can see the mesorectum right now. So, otherwise I'm going into that plane. See, you can see it curving here. So it is not, this is not the part of mesorectum. So I'll end up in the uterine tissue. So that has to go with the uterus. Okay? The uterine artery, uterine vein and all will come there because... Okay. See, our, our tissue is ending there. So there is... Because of this addition, there is little bit of a problem. 
So now again we'll try to get this bit sorted. Some uh, uh, pelvic inflammation or something, I don't know. Because here I got the clear plane under it, though it was woozy. So whichever side we are able to get in, let's get in and uh, get the tissue, uh, rectum free. The part of the specimen, I'm going in here, okay? Mm. I'm more worried that I'll end up opening the vagina than uh, this one in this area. Yeah, assistance. Wait, I mean, wait, 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 we'll get it, we'll get it. See, now the plane is clear. This is the plane, okay? That's the uterine which you are seeing there. You can see the pulsation of the uterine artery. And now it, this is the vagina. Okay, clean enough? Hmm. So this is how generally the vagina moves away from the rectum when you just push it a few spots of ooze may be there but you can tackle it with monopolar or bipolar as you want. So, so these are the spots we can see. So a gentle push as far low down as possible. We just dissect the vagina away from the uh, rectum. And as we go down, because these areas are highly vascular you will there will be ooze we don't use too much of energy source in these regions but there will be use the inferior uh, ooze will be there from the vaginal vessels as well as the inferior hemorrhoidal vessels right so
how far down we still have more to go now yeah section i mean fully suck it up section please yeah posterior posterior also here you want to irrigate and take it out irrigation hakidre madabodu idanu suck madkonbidi ಮೇಲ್ಗಡೆ ಊಸ್ ಇದೆಯಾ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಚೆಕ್ ಚೆಕ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಥವಾ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫೋಕಸ್ ಆನ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ನೌ ರೈಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ಅಬೌ ಓಕೆ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಕಮ್ these are generally the hemorrhoidal vessels which bleed because they communicate with the rectal uh, rectum so we'll see as we go down we'll take care of that are we compromising here no no plain looks okay mm. yeah it's clear so you can see the pelvic floor okay, this is the levator which is very clearly seen i am freeing the levator as we go down we should be seeing the hemorrhoidal vessels see these are the hemorrhoidal vessels which are seeing so i don't want to go below that because uh in fact that is that's where we chain the plane into the intersphincteric space so uh, we have done from the left side we have done sufficient we still will have posterior to complete i'll finish the sorry right side we are completed i'll finish the right uh, sorry left and i'll come back down again i'll go into the posterior after that so now this plane is clear we have dissected up to here till now
that's the uterine that you are seeing there. So we'll go into the. Enapa, Ami. Ah, please do, because I don't know what's happening to the. Your retraction is okay. Actually, cutting this will give us little more uh, freedom. So let's just, uh, you know, free the sigmoid. Okay? It's not giving us the play which we want. We'll just free the uh, sigmoid and then we'll continue. Ureter must be posterior, you can see it there, ureter is here, ureter is here. So, as you are cutting this peritoneal fold, you should be cautious enough to see ureter and make sure that you don't cut it. Yeah, yeah, you will get a good play right now. So, now let's get go into the right course all fibrosis so we have to be yeah come back retract i'll see whether which plane we'll take Oops. Suction there. Yeah, no problem. Come. What are you fighting with? Yeah, now it's fairly clean. And there is some drop of blood falling from the uh, from anteriorly. I don't know what that is. We'll figure it out. Not from there. In fact. Just behind the camera, I just, maybe from the uterus, we'll see. Okay, so we have this much of clearance now. All this is also mesorectal fat, so we can't leave this alone uh, behind. Wait, yeah. Fair enough, leave it. We are around the, this one sphincter now, so I have to, I better go posteriorly. Let me just finish the uh, vaginal mobilization anteriorly a little more. So for that, what we have to do, yeah, traction is very important, but get the progress in. See, there is some ooze over there anteriorly we have to tackle. This has to be dropped posterior.
so now you are seeing that you know white glistening area the glisten is uh, because we are reaching the pelvic flow uh, the uh, perineal body so it's totally a fibrotic or uh, fibrous area so condensation of the fascia you can see over there we are reaching the perineal body as we go down so there will be some white you you'll see it before reaching there so i think we are almost there I mean, shall I? You have given traction. fine so i think with that we have completed the lateral dissection difficult because of the severe adhesions that she had but otherwise uh, it has come out nice there is no problem means finally the uh, planes have come out clear we can see the rectum we can see the vaginal wall anteriorly so the dissection planes are clear so now i need to go to the posterior aspect to get into the intersynteric plane Okay, let's get posteriorly and uh, see how it looks. Okay. I need a thorough cleaning. Just a minute. Yeah. I mean can you come out of the way please yeah thank you so here we are we can see the uh, longitudinal fibers now coming and going down and decussating with the pelvic uh, floor can you suction here i mean let's see where is that losing from you can reach
جس سک کے بو ابو ام یا دیر از دا کلپریٹ یا اوکے Stopped. So we'll expose the muscle, the levator, and then the puborectalis muscle. So this is the puborectalis sling uh, which will get exposed as we go down. This is the levator. So we go, see these are the uh, hemorrhoidal vessels. So very less cautery otherwise you may end up perforating the rectum or you will end, uh, end up perfor or uh, damaging the muscle. So both should not happen. So careful use of cautery sometimes the your assistant uh, using irrigation spurts of irrigation does help to give a clear area so that should be used cautiously though to avoid uh, avoid flooding so you can see the sling here we ca you can see the rectal wall this is a decussation of fibers. So as we go closer, we can cut the fibers. Again, cautery very cautiously because these are very small thin fibers. and you have very little space so you have to do with the space that is available to you and you are going to save as much of the muscle as possible and the best place to identify in my experience is the lateral you will see the uh, sling very well laterally when you do to some extent, when you are beginning, in the beginning of your this one, uh, uh, the assistant or somebody who, uh, it's better to do a per rectal examination and check what's happening, the length and all that, but it is not always mandatory. See these are hemorrhoidal vessels which come in the way as you go down and you need to coagulate them.
I mean, do we have anybody to do PR? Uh, can you ask somebody to come if there is somebody free or chance is there? Namma team ali. Yar idhar hai? Ah. See again, these are the lat uh, longitudinal fibers decussating. With the uh, levator, I just want to know which is the plane where we are, means we are okay, we are far enough and we can stop, that's why. You can still see the longitudinal fibers here. This is the specimen side. In India? Ah, see where, uh, where is this? Yeah. Posteriorly check where, where the instrument is. Posterior, it is way down, down. That doesn't matter. Okay. No, no. How far from the, in the NL canal? Just keep your finger there, I'll touch it. You keep, uh, Deva, oh. please keep your st finger stable, I will touch it. How far down am I? This is uh, uh, one centimeter from the Okay, fine, that is good enough. Okay, I got the idea about the length, ala. Suck. So, you know, the table side assistant has told me that I am one centimeter from the NL verge, so I have done quite a uh, low dissection on this side. So, what I will be doing is, I will be completing the same dissection circumferentially. I will be cutting all this fibers. Sometimes, you know, you get confused with the fibers, uh, vertical fibers and the uh, horizontal, uh, sorry, the um, sphincter. So, you have to be cautious. Identify the sphincter. The dissection on the right side is complete. Left side is not complete on this side. So, we continue the same dissection on the right, left, sorry.
yeah I mean this section there Heat, uh, heat agatha mean the irrigation fine I finished it off section there clear it off yeah So now this is the puborectalis sling which has been separated. I have gone into the, uh, uh, you know, my assistant has told me that, you know, I am already in the pelvic, uh, you know, mucocutaneous junction over here or end of anal canal, one centimeter almost. So I will repeat the same thing on this side. See, these are the, uh, the external sphincter. This is the external sphincter and you can see the longitudinal fiber. The decussion of the fiber with the pelvic floor I have cut. So I am getting into this space and this is the extent to which we can go. So this is the anal canal. I have separated the anal canal from the sphincter. Little bit oozy there because you cannot use any energy. This. Yeah, so that is the anal canal, this is the sphincter, external sphincter, right, so here you are. So there is some more, yeah, I mean you are in the way, yeah. So we will take it down, this is the left dissection. You can see the sphincters there. This will complete from the other side. Yes, we can complete from the anterior as well. So, we are make, I'm making sure that we have a circumferential mobilization of the rectum so that we don't have to do much from the anal side. So, here I will move to the uh, mobilize it circumferentially. This is the specimen. I mean, yeah, suction or irrigation, a small spurt of irrigation really helps. Again, the sphincter muscle, you can see that as I go down the vertical fibers, you can see from the rectum, sphincter going horizontally and anteriorly. So we protect the sphincter as we go anterior. Let's see, we can get the hemostasis on that, yeah. So this is the sphincter, again a so few hemorrhoidal vessels, so pushing it, so all that is sphincter, so going in the plane, intersyncteric plane, going anteriorly, this is skin. So let's finish this uh, left either.
so take take it because i can't get my yeah gentle gentle i mean so we are doing the left colic mobilization as high as possible see sometimes it may not be possible to do complete up to the splenic flexure this case particularly would require an extensive mobilization which might require repositioning because she has a very short One nimsha, one nimsha. Don't pull like that. Don't pull like that. Don't pull like that, please. Don't pull. I mean, don't pull. Yeah, come here. Swing is always better than pull. Because if you pull like that, you might be taking into the port. Yeah, yeah. So you may damage the bubble when you're doing that. I'm not using third uh, arm here right now. Let me see if I can get it in because if I get it in only, I get a better reach of the instruments. Nidana, I mean, slowly and the head of the, okay, Nidana, 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 let's think what you have to do, get the entire thing down now, yeah, down, so,
I mean, see, you, uh, see, uh, can you just see whether you can take it down a little? Just don't traumatize. Take here, take here. Take here, yeah. Gentle, don't hold the bubble, yeah. Good. Okay, let me see whether I can get around this area. Because posterior mobilization is already done. So it should not be a problem to get around here. So splenic, uh, splenic flexure is down now. So you can see the tail of pancreas there. So above is momentum. You know, we can't suck because we are limited by the number of instruments. So we have the small bubble duodenum coming from there. So we are done. I mean, leave it. So that is splenic flexure mobilization. Completed, no? Okay, so now the left colon is straight, so that should be adequate for our pelvic, uh, this one. So I'm turning. Okay, uh, can we have prograsp now? We'll just finish up or we'll just hold it and uh, do it because anyway, uh, I want you to use the Liga shirt. Uh, do we have the vision because some I see some, some blotch? Yeah. All right, so, yeah, get the Liga sure ready. Now we have to decide till where, no, this is not the place. You want to? Huh? What? Ah. You know? Hello. Yep. So, so this is the root of the uh, artery, inframus centric artery. So our Specimen will start from here. You're okay? Yeah. Yeah. There only, you're right. Yep, because vein we can't remove to that extent, so we can remove the artery, that's all, yeah. We have to, uh, that, that, uh, yeah. little, yeah, down, down, little, little wider, yeah, there. It takes smaller chunks, otherwise it will bleed. Yeah. Go little, uh, yeah. Little wider so that... One, uh, we'll reassess once. Yeah, go a little wider on this. Yeah, go towards the ICG ready, Idya. Yeah? Go, yeah, there. Fair enough. ICG ready, na? Oh, this also, uh, see, yeah, you cut this off. Just a minute, I mean, let me reposition this and uh, get a reorientation. I hope the specimen, yeah. 
I think, uh, yeah, you can cut this off. Yeah. Cut all that. Strands. Okay. Mm. No, 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 not small bites, small bites. You're taking bubble over there. Yeah. So you're seeing bubble there. Yeah. Done. Yeah. So this is our, uh, you know, presumed margin. So we'll see with indocyanin green. Given, huh? Okay. So I put on the firefly mode. So in this we'll be waiting for the indocyanin green to come in. So this part of the surgery is over. Now the uh, anal part has to start. So we are using a mini buclear retractor to uh, perform the, the perineal dissection. So I'm using, it is similar to the other retractors which are available. So multiple hooks, I'm using four hooks to begin with and then I'll be uh, using eight hooks. I'll give you, okay? Don't be in a hurry. Take this. I'll, I'll put it inside this. Okay. Can we get the low, uh, this thing? The adrenaline. So uh, we have put the uh, hook retractors. And we are seeing, you know, uh, you can see the dentate line here. You can see the papilla over there. So I'll be injecting the. It's okay. He has only this today. So in the subcutane, uh, sub mucosal plane, I am injecting the uh, adrenaline solution so that you know we have a better hemostasis. I'm injecting adrenaline solution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm taking mucosal cut. And as I take mucosal cut, I should see the superficial part of the external sphincter here, suction. So as less cautery as possible. So as soon as I enter here, I'll see the white fibers. White fibers are that of, no, still I am uh, not deep enough. Correct, no? Deep enough. Yeah, listen. No, I'm not seeing the circular fibers. Suction there. Right. Mm. 
the vertical man. I need to see the side plus. See this mm. become circular here. Okay. We, I should have taken the headlights. Yeah. So you can see the circular fiber. This is a superficial uh, fiber, superficial uh, sphincter, superficial, superficial part of the external sphincter. So this is the longitudinal fiber, which is still continuing to a certain extent. Gosh, Koda. Yeah, you can see. See, this is circular. So, map. Yenante? Okay, thank you. So, I'll be completing the posterior first and entering the pelvis because map it. I generally don't take a uh, suture, uh, you know, first string suture. It's not required, I feel, because we have already completed the dissection. We don't have much to complete. So I usually just leave it alone. I just take the uh, circumferential cut and take it posteriorly. Taking it here, okay, now. Section mother Agatha mean because every time you mop no it mm. tears off. I'm I have to I'm holding no so it tears off. Section would help me. Okay. Give me bipolar, yeah. Just, uh, I'm not getting that grip there. It's not holding enough. I'm thinking of taking a stitch. Longitudinal fibers are still there. You can see the, mm. yeah. The plane is here. Yeah. This forceps is not holding, I think. That's a problem. So this is the plane which we have already dissected. Are we inside, sir? Yeah, we are inside. I can feel that. Here, here. Mop. It's 
nuts coming from the top. No, no, it's from there. See, this is bleeding here. Edge, mucosal edge. You want to detect it? Mm, I was thinking, you know, or we'll just take a stitch on the this thing, but there is a risk of... Uh, no, get retractors. Come on, finger retractors, please. Yeah, yeah finger. Other. We're getting retractors, we have. Hey, no, we have... What uh, is this, man? Yes, small ones. No, no, we, we ha I think, you know, he doesn't... I think he doesn't... Uh, he knows, yeah. Yes, you have full access. She had hemorrhoids, see. A lot of hemorrhoids, you know. Someone the retractor, Cody? Finger retractor. Okay, Nange, uh, you uh, give me this thing, Babcock's sound. Just hold it, I mean. These are leftover uh, this ones. Okay. Leave it, I mean. So we have done anteriorly also. So this is the plane anteriorly. Just gently hold it. I mean, don't put any pressure because mm. specimen will uh, integrity will go. Keep it down. That gives a fair enough for attraction, though little asymmetrical, it's okay. This side, I mean, leave this, yeah. Take this. Okay. You can see this is the sphincter. You can see that. Mm -hmm. Leave it one second. I'll take it a little more. Huh? Yeah.
ಬೇರೆ ರಿಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಇದೆಯಾ ಸಣ್ಣದು ಕೊಡೋ ಒಂದು ಲಂಗನ್ ಬೆಡ್ಸಿ ಕೊಡಪ್ಪ ಇರಿ 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 ಡೋಂಟ್ ಪುಟ್ ಅನ್ನೆಸರಿ ಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ now that we have a, a mucosal margin defined we can just pick up the uh, pick up the whatever remaining tissue and we should be able to uh, separate it from the vaginal wall without much difficulty not mucosa no mm-hmm. not the mucosa sorry what did you say it really works actually no that is giving me a good traction passive traction that is a vaginal wall mm. okay so that is giving me a good babcock gives me a good traction on the surface so very little tissue is left behind trying to save the vaginal vault ups slipped off it didn't tear the specimen but it slipped off ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಮನ್ ಔಟ್ ಯು ಟುಕ್ ದಟ್ so this is our uh, pedicle so we have the entire specimen out okay suction yankar ko briga uh idu suture ring en ittkondidira vaikralla vaikralla okay sir idu clean maadkonda amel cut mana yavudun clean maadkonda idu ಏನಾಗಲ್ಲ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ನೆವರ್ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಇಟ್ ನೆವರ್ ಫಗೆಟ್ ಅನ್ ಇದು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅನ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಕಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಫೋರ್ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ನೋ ವೇರ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಟ್ Uh, mucosal end is again this is the sphincter so we are taking uh, four corners first remember when i removed the specimen i did not rotate the specimen that is very important because 
uh, you know, our conduit should not rotate above. So it should come out straight, no rotation whatsoever. So one, so we are using uh, Y krill 3 zero. Push this inside. Ah, that will go inside. It won't come out. Don't go. leave it. Leave it. Okay, cut this. Mop Martha Ransola, Idad Mele, Stitchard Mele. Pro Cutter. Mop there. See, these are full thickness stitches. This is the mucosal edge. So now we complete this. The advantage of Mediflex retractor is that it is uh, reusable. We don't have to or the mini buckler retractor is that you know we don't have to uh, it's not disposable we reuse it it is a steel one or titan titanium i think so uh, so it's environmentally friendly and pocket friendly over the long run Take this stitch also. Oops, tear right, Allah. Yes, sir. Suture margin on two, tear right. Loose right, plus it tore also a little bit. This is where it was bleeding, no?
So also we have dilated it, so it's going to take its shape after some time. Enorectal sling is felt here, you can feel it. Mm. Sling you can feel, no? Yeah. Okay, so see this is a specimen that we have removed. Few important things, this is the distal end of this specimen. So you can see this is the distal end. Uh, this is the proximal. So this is the... Uh, you know the stump, the inferior mesenteric artery stump. So you are seeing the mesentery over there. So also important to notice is the mesorectal margin. So this is the mesorectum. You can see it is a very clean mesorectum. There is no breach in the mesorectal fascia. It's a single. Uh, you can see the glistening layer of uh, fascia on top of the entire mesorectum. So this is how a mesorect uh, total mesorectal excision specimen should look uh, i can feel the tumor the margin of resection is adequate uh, so the resection of ma margin should be at least one millimeter negative margin but we have more than a centimeter of margin she has responded very well to treatment chemo radiation so this is the examination of specimen it's very important that you examine and you know what you have done so this is how a specimen should look thank you Okay.